Just keep paddling. Just keep paddling. Just keep paddling. Welcome back to 340 Paddler, and today I want to deal with an issue that is sometimes seen as a little bit controversial. Not just in paddle sports in general, but sometimes at some of these ultra marathon events, and that is drafting. Why is it controversial? Because at the end of the day, it gives certain people an advantage. So let's explore the issue because this could be the sort of advantage that could be key to your doing really well in the 340. Now, let's look at the idea behind drafting. The idea is instead of turbulent air, or in this case, turbulent water behind your boat, sort of slowing it down, uh, that turbulence actually helps the boat behind you as long as they stay in position. So this is a technique where two vehicles or other moving objects are aligned to reduce the effects of drag. And there are a couple of ways that you can do it. You can do it by running up rudder to rudder. You can do it by running side by side with the two boats at the sides a little bit behind. They're riding the bow wake. We'll get into that in a minute. So let's look at the advantages of drafting. When you're drafting, the person in front is pulling it full force. And then as you move back, the people behind them are pulling a little bit less. So there is no penalty to the person in front. They're not being slowed down in any way. They might be irritated because this guy is taking advantage of my turbulent water and that's my turbulent water and I really like my turbulent water. Okay, okay, I'll stop. But there is some advantage, especially when you're in the back. Now, when you get into K1 racing and shorter canoe marathons, you see a lot of drafting, especially this diamond formation. And here's a rough estimate of how much energy you can save. In a diamond formation, the two people at the sides are saving about 7% effort. The one at the back, about 16%. And I got this from Canoe Race World. Uh, it was posted there very recently on Facebook. Now, in practicality on the 340, you're probably getting around closer to 10%, maybe uh, a little bit more or a little bit less if you're in that second boat, if you're in the green boat there uh, with the red boat taking the lead. So drafting can be very beneficial. It saves you some energy, but it takes a little bit of work because there are a couple of different methods to drafting properly, especially a race like the 340. Now, when we look at your standard uh weight coming off of a boat and by the way this of course changes boat to boat this is the bow wake what you see coming off at the front here and what you can do is you can line up your boat just slightly behind them so that the boat is actually tipped a little bit downhill so it would almost look like this if this is level it would actually feel like it's tipped a little downhill with the bow wake sitting behind you pushing you along. Now, if you stop paddling, you're going to fall off that bow wake. You're going to simply drop back. But that's one place that you can work. The other place is if you sit right behind. The closer you are, the better you are. You want to be within a foot or so. And that, you're just plowing through their turbulent water. And that breaks up the water tension. It allows for you to put in a little bit less effort. Drafting will not help that much with wind, etc. And I should point out on the 340, being in this position on the side can be very, very helpful because now I can have a conversation. Whereas conversation to the back, the person in the back can hear, but the person in the front cannot. So it gets to be kind of problematic. So this side-by-side -side drafting tends to be very common because some people want the conversation more than the assist. So the most common form you're going to see in the 340 closer than this is going to be bow to stern. Typically, you're going to want to be within six inches to a foot of the bow in front of you. You will see people drafting within an inch sometimes. Now, the problem is the closer you get, if the guy in front has to hit his rudder because he hits a boil or an eddy or whatever else, then his boat moves over six inches or a foot 
and now you have to move over. And the closer you are, the harder it is to adjust. So you really want someone with a rudder in front of you who has that kind of control. Someone who doesn't have a rudder in a canoe or something is going to be moving back and forth, just the nature of the canoe stroke. And you will see these lines of people running down the 340. It's more common in day one. It kind of falls apart as things progress and people start deciding that, hey, I want to go out on my own or, hey, I want to be up next to someone. Because, again, that conversation could lower your perceived effort enough that it makes it worth more worthwhile than sitting behind someone and drafting. Now, there's some do's and don'ts when it comes to drafting. When you see an OC-1, one of these outrigger canoes, this is the original prototype of the Riverhawk. It belongs to, I believe this is Joe Mann's today. In this case, there are two drafts. You're going to get a draft coming off of the back and one coming off the Yama. Now, with OC-1s, well, let me be specific here. With Riverhawks, there's almost no draft. It's very hard to draft off of those. But a lot of people want to sit up in here because actually there's a very good draft between the hull and the Alma. But let's not do that. The problem is if you or they steer a certain direction and really things get away from them a little bit, you're going to run into trouble. You don't want to break someone's boat. So don't get in between the Alma and the hull. You want to be back. You want to be back about where their rudder is or their stern is, and you want to hang out back there so that if they do turn, they're never at risk of hitting your boat, and your boat is never at risk of hitting theirs. Also, of course, no drafting off of power boats, no matter how envious you are of those power boats or how fast you can really paddle. So don't do that. Also, no drafting off of the safety boats. Now, of course, the safety boat might kick by and you take advantage of that turbulence for a little bit. You're not up in their wake. You're letting them run off in front of you and you just kind of take that kick for a minute. That's fine, but you can't be sitting on their wake. You can't be sitting on their tail. And remember, if you're, you know, for example, drafting the Reaper, that's kind of problematic unless you intend to pass them every time they get to a checkpoint. So don't do that. One of the key things to do is make sure you're drafting off of a larger boat. And I'm being very general here. What you're looking for is a boat with greater displacement if you want to get more technical. I want a boat that's larger wider than what I'm paddling and I want a paddler or the weight of the boat to be greater than myself and my boat because they're going to throw off a larger draft and be easier to draft off of. Something like this boat, as long as you can keep up with it, would be a fantastic draft. The key is staying up with it and while the draft saves you energy, you don't want to end up in a hole. You don't want to burn off more energy than you have or that you can afford at that time. Also, if you're drafting with a group, make sure that you're taking turns. People tend to appreciate that. They tend to get very cross if you've been sitting drafting off of them for 20 miles and have no intention of taking the lead role to give them a little bit of a break. And if you're nervous about taking the lead role, then be vocal about it. Tell them, hey, I'm not sure that I'm fast enough to take that lead role. And they might say, you know what, that's fine. I just need a bit of a break. I need someone else up here. I want that. Uh, advantage so that I can get through the race. Ultimately, we want to see you get to the finish. And drafting, especially if you're running in the pack, may be a key element. You don't have to be moving fast to take advantage of the ideas behind drafting. And if you can, if you're a solo boat and you can draft off of a tandem, do it. If you're a tandem and you can draft off a three-man, fantastic. You can even draft off boats that are the same as yours. Any of these tricks will help you get to the finish of the 340, having expended a little less energy, meaning you will enjoy yourself a little more and have a little more time at the hotel to sleep, rest, and get pictures at the finish line like Dustin LaCave. So until next time, this is 340 Paddler, hoping that you keep your paddle in the water.